welcome to the YouTube channel of MCO Law Office. I am your lady lawyer, attorney Maria Cecilia Oliva. In this video, I will discuss with you the concept of open deed of sale. But before we proceed to this video, please click subscribe, the bell icon, and please give this video a thumbs up. So without further delay, let us start the discussion. So before we go into the details of an open deed of sale, I want to first discuss the meaning or the technical definition of sale as provided in the civil code. So take a look at this one. Having read that definition, you will definitely see that in a contract of sale, there are two parties. You have the seller and the buyer. Now, from the sale provision, you know that the obligation of the seller are the following. Number one, to transfer the ownership of the determinate thing being sold. And of course, to deliver the determinate thing to the buyer. Now, the obligation of the buyer, on the other hand, is to pay the price of the thing, right? So, what is an open deed of sale? Well, basically, when you talk about open deed of sale, it is a contract or a, or a written instrument where only the seller... Uh, signed the said document but the buyer part is left blank and most of the time uh, the price is also left blank now in my practice I've had a lot of clients come into the office and asking me as a notary public to notarize an open deed of sale and my default question is nasaan si buyer and si seller sometimes the answer is quite obvious obvious in the sense that um, there's only one person bringing or there's only one person coming to me and asking me to notarize the document obviously diba wala si seller so ako i refuse to notarize those kinds of documents especially if wala si seller I mean, really, kailangan present si buyer and si seller when it comes to uh, having the document notarized. Okay? Kasi ang hirap naman, di ba, magnotaryo ako ng document, si buyer lang ang nandun. Tapos wala si seller. And then, at the time of the notarization of the document, uh, kaya pala wala, na si, wala si seller dito sa aking presence dahil patay na siya, edi patay din ako. Oh. That is the reason why I don't notarize open deed of sale and no notary public should also um, notarize that kind of doc document. So why has the execution of an open deed of sale become a practice? Well, more often than not kasi, yung first buyer is merely a broker or he or she is a person who is engaged in the buy and sell of uh, motor vehicles and they have no intention of holding on to the property for too long. The intention really is to dispose the vehicle as fast as they can. And yun nga, since ang mentality nila is, hindi naman magtatagal sa possession ko yung property na yan. So why take the effort na i-transfer yung ownership sa akin? Diba? And besides, let's say, uh, hindi ka agad na benta yung property. So, kung na-transfer yung ownership sa kanila, feeling nila sila yung lugi. Bakit? Hindi nga nila, ba diba, property kuno yung sasakyan. Hindi nila pagmamayari yon Kasi, again, ang intention nila ibenta. So, since, yun nga, na-transfer yung ownership, magbabayad sila nung... Uh, renewal ng registration and uh, insurance and 
you know, these expenses, ayaw nilang i-shoulder. That, and that is why uh, they would rather uh, execute an open deed of sale. Another reason why the execution of an open deed of sale has become a practice is because, <laughs> eto, hindi ko to gusto tong reason na to. Uh, gusto nilang ipalabas na even if the property was already sold for like multiple times, four, five, six, however many times, they would like na yung property ay magmukhang uh, binili ng second owner lang. No. <laughs> that is a stupid uh, reason for me, ha? I'm sorry. Sorry. Wala, I, I don't mean to uh, be condescending, but I don't see the point. Okay. So, in relation to Republic Act number 11235, this is the Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act. So again, itong provision, uh, itong law na to, uh, this only tackles um, motorcycles. Um, the said law mandates the owner of the motorcycle to um, immediately inform the LTO of any sale or disposition of the motorcycle. So, yun. <laughs> That's problematic kasi nga pag nag-open deed of sale, definitely, unang transfer pa lang, hindi na na-report ka agad sa LTO. If you'll read the said law, you will find out na meron pong penalty sa mga negligent owners na hindi mag-update sa LTO kapag nabenta yung kanilang property. I mean, this is... I mean, violation of this law is a criminal offense. So, pwede po kayong makulong and at the same time, pagbabayarin kayo ng penalty. So, kapag kayo ay na-convict, that, that is already a criminal record. So, pag maghahanap kayo ng employment, more often than not, baka mahirapan kayong maghanap ng employment. Kasi, sino ba namang employer, di ba, ang tatanggap ng uh, aplikante na may criminal record? And besides, yung mga, yung ganito kasi yung uh, uh, criminal act, for me ha, it's, ano, hindi siya justifiable or ano siya, pwede siyang ma-prevent. Kadali-dali lang mag-report sa LTO na binenta mo yung property tapos hindi mo pa ginawa. So, that's a sign of, ano, being negligent. So, having said all those, uh, here comes my tips. So, the first tip that I will give you is that if you are the first owner of a motor vehicle, whether that is a motorcycle or a car, you should not allow or you should not tolerate the execution of an open deed of sale. You should always insist na since this is a sale transaction, nagkaliwaan tayo, ibibigay ko na sa iyo yung sasakyan, tapos sinanggap ko na yung pera mo, dapat hindi na yan open deed of sale. Kailangan ikaw, buyer, pumirma ka dyan. And now, meron tayong dalawa bilang owner, or bilang uh, buyer and seller, we have the responsibility to update or to inform LTO na meron ganitong sale transaction na nangyari involving this specific vehicle. Okay? So again, seller, especially if you are the first owner of the vehicle, huwag kayong papayag na pumirma ng open deed of sale only. Always make sure that the deed of sale is complete. Complete in the sense na nandun yung pangalan ni buyer and andun din yung price na nakasulat. Now, ano ba yung magiging disadvantage if ikaw first, uh, first owner ka and then inalaw mo yung open deed of sale. Ano yung magiging consequence on your part? Now, you have to remember, di ba, binenta mo na yung property na yon. So, obviously, yung sasakyan wala na sa control mo. Iba na yung gumagamit, hindi na ikaw. Now, since open deed of sale yan, malamang sa malamang, hindi yan, hindi nalipat ang ownership sa pangalan ng buyer. So, what if Hindi na ikaw na yung owner, di ba? Hindi na ikaw yung gumagamit ng sasakyan. Yung sasakyan, inadisgrasya. Since ikaw pa rin yung registered owner, 
ikaw ang magiging liable for whatever damage eh, ang na-sustain during that accident. Do you want that? Of course not. Think about it. Now, if you are the buyer, the first step is that you have to know the name of the person selling the vehicle to you. And then, you compare that name to the registered owner's name. If there is a discrepancy, then kailangan may warning bells at the back of your mind. Because you have to remember that it's only the owner of a property who has the right to sell. So, if the person selling to you a vehicle is not the registered owner, then what, author what authority does he or she have? to sell that property. Abay, again, malay natin, di ba, kung carnap na vehicle yan. So, uh, warning. Of course, kung ang nagbebenta sa'yo is not the registered owner, and then sinabi pa niya na, ako yung ano, ikatlong buyer neto. So, ikaw na yung magiging fourth buyer. Hmm, another warning bell. Bakit? It is obvious na yung transfer ng ownership ay hindi kaagad na record, de ba? Hindi kaagad inasikaso. So, pag ni-record mo or pag uh, pag gusto mo nang i-transfer yung ownership ng vehicle na yon sa pangalan mo, expect na ikaw yung shoulder ng penalties na kaakibat ng late uh, transfer of ownership. That can be expensive. So, be careful. And again, balik tayo dun sa uh, authority ng person selling if he or she is not the registered owner. You have to remember, Hana, only the owner can sell a property that's supposedly owned by him or her. So, kung itong taong to, hindi siya yung registered owner, malamang, di ba? So, ano yung authority mo to sell this one? Do you have the permission from the registered owner to sell this property? Pag sinabi niya na, oh, meron, oh, nasan yung SPA mo? And then, sasabihin na, wala po akong SPA. Ay, nako. Huwag mo nang ituloy yung transaction na yan. Masakit sa ulo yan. Okay? Kasi, a person, I mean, di ba, kailangan alert ka sa mga ganyang bagay. Kung I mean, you are dealing with a huge amount of money here and then ipagkakatiwala mo yung pera mo sa isang tao na hindi naman pala authorized na magbenta niyan. Mm. Kahit na sabihin natin na, o, oh, siya na yung third, fourth owner, pero hindi naman sa kanya nakapangalan yung 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 vehicle, di ba? Ikaw pa yung magsasuffer na ikaw yung magbabayad ng penalty o papayag ka ba? So, if I were you, pag mga ganyang situation, walk out ka na lang. And you look for a much better deal. Na yung talagang sigurado ka at kampante ka. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please click subscribe, the bell icon, and please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, you can also visit my Facebook page, MCO Law Office. And you can use my Facebook page to book your appointments for legal consultation or whatever legal service you wish to avail from my law office. So once again, I am your lady lawyer, attorney Maria Cecilia Oliva. I am now signing out.